Today I will be talking about the unemployment rate, labor force, and the labor force participation rate. By the end of this, you should be able to calculate all three and figure out the unemployment rate as well as labor force participation rate. So let's start off with some numbers. Let's just say that our employed amount, amount of people employed, equals say 238 million and I'm gonna make this smaller so it's easier to keep it up there employed equals 238 mil in unemployed equals 12 million and the population over 16 equals 400 million. This should be enough to figure out both the labor force, unemployment rate, as well as the labor force participation rate. So let's start off with the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate equals, I'm going to just write it as UR so it's simple. Unemployment rate equals the amount unemployed divided by, and I apologize for my writing, I'm trying to do it as neat as possible divided by the labor force. Well, we already have the amount unemployed right here. But what we need to know is the labor force because we can divide 12 million by the labor force, but if we don't know it, then how do we calculate that? Well, simple. What we need to do figure out the labor force is at or use the equation for the labor force and so the equation for the labor force is, and I'm writing it as LF LF equals employed plus unemployed now the reason why it isn't the population over 16 or everybody the reason for that is because there are a lot of people who choose not to work and we don't want to include them in the labor force because that would be a misleading statistic. For instance, retirees, disabled, as well as stay-at-home moms and dads or students in college, if you choose not to work, we shouldn't include you in the unemployment rate. That would not make any sense. So if our labor force is the employed plus the unemployed, we would have 238 million plus 12 million equals 250. So right here we have 250 as the labor force. That was the amount unemployed plus employed. And up on the top, remember, it's unemployed. So we have 12 divided by 250 times 100, actually, to get the rate and so that would equal out to be 4.8%. Before we get uh, times 100, it's 0 0.048. And we times that by 100, and we get 4.8%. That tells us where our unemployment rate is. And if you'll recall from lecture over chapter 7, in the big lectures, which I cover the PowerPoint, the natural rate of unemployment is what we want to hit and once we hit that we're at full employment we'll never be at an unemployment rate of zero percent this is because there are a lot of people that are leaving the workforce to look for better jobs it takes time to find a job we talked about structural unemployment things like that and also we know that with technological progress from chapter eight as the economy grows we're going to see some people leave their current jobs because they got replaced by technology. That's okay because the economy is growing. So now, let's go ahead and look at, I'll just erase this part right here. Let's look at the labor force participation rate. And I'm new with this whiteboard app, so hopefully I get better at it as time progresses. So we have our labor force right here. This is 250 million. And to figure out the labor force 
participation rate. I'm going to write it just in the acronym LFPR. <laughs> Hopefully you understand that as labor force participation rate equals the labor force divided by the population greater than 16 times 100. So we already have the labor force 250 million. So we have 250 million on the top divided by the population over 16. Now the reason why it's the population over 16 is because of our labor laws that state that you have to be over 16 to work legally unless there's exception such as a hardship or something like that. You work on a farm, your parents are divorced and you need money, something to that extent and you might be saying well should we include those people? Well even if we do include those people because they are working it would be 1 divided by 1 and they would cancel each other out, right? So we don't really need to include those people. What we're looking at is the people that could be working but choose not to. Or could be working and choose to. And so we get 250 divided by the 400. And that equates to essentially... If we did that out, uh, 0.625 and we times that by 100 equals 62.5%. Now, what is interesting about this statistic, and my highlighter pretty much covered it all up, is that we have seen a decrease in the labor force participation rate over the last five years and specifically the last year and a half what that is telling us is a lot of people are leaving the labor force and when they do you'll learn from chapter 7 and as as well as chapter 8 we see a decrease in overall production and during a recession we typically do see a lot of people leaving the labor force because it's to the point where they're discouraged remember discouraged unemployment that's where you've just given up on finding a job, things like that. Or you are wanting a better job, so you go and seek human capital in the form of education. This can be detrimental because that means there are a lot of people who are not contributing to the economy. The idea is that we want to have a labor force participation rate as high as possible. Um, it's also misleading because it will typically lead to a higher unemployment rate even though it's not necessarily true because if the labor force keeps decreasing and decreasing we will see let's say if it was the labor force was a hundred and we had 12 divided by a hundred we would see unemployment at 12 percent well that's because so many people left the labor force I hope you enjoyed this lecture I hope it was informative and have a good day